In the far distant future, humans no longer inhabitate Earth. And in their place are a local and yet hyperspecies of honeybee. In the game Apiary, you will play as one of 20 different factions attempting to vie for control over Earth and create carvings for your colony before the dearth, the time in which all your honeybees need to hibernate. This is a worker placement game uh, that plays one to five players, uh, takes roughly 60 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And uh, in the game, you're basically going to be taking a worker and placing it in one of six different various areas on the game board. Do you want to gather resources? Create new areas for your colony, or perhaps grow your colony, carve out your carvings, or even invoke a dance. At the end of the game, in which all of the honeybees have hibernated a certain number of times, you'll calculate your score and whoever has the most points is the winner. This game has a few resemblances to some other unique uh, worker placement type games, and it's also got its own unique style as well as a power mechanic introduced in the honeybees. Let's take it down and we'll show you how to set the game up, how to play in the most basic forms and concepts, and then of course my review. To begin setting up the game Apiary, the first thing you will do is determine the number of players playing the game. If you're playing one to three players, use the front side of the main mat. If you are playing four to five players, flip over that and go ahead and play on that side. The next thing you will do is Based on each number of players, you're going to get a number of different things. The first thing is your main mat. You're also going to be getting one specific colony faction. You'll be getting a docking mat, as well as workers, a unique hibernation pods, and a third player marker. Go ahead and place your colony on top of your mat where it says faction tile. It's exactly in that filled in area. And then also go ahead and place all your hibernation pods, your third player marker on the left hand side of your docking mat, and your three workers up at the top. Your main uh, colony is going to determine what starting workers you have, and of course what starting resources you have as well. They are the ones that are highlighted on the tile. It's also going to have its own unique faction ability, which is explained in the uh, appendix of the rulebook. Then, go ahead and take all the resources, place them in the bin that comes with the game, which is very nice, as well as, of course, these extra docking pads here that you'll be using later. And there are two workers that you don't use currently, but you will set aside and will hopefully be able to use later in the game. Then we have the main game board. In the top left-hand corner, you're going to go ahead and take these yellow circles, flip them face down, mix them up, and then place one in each of the locations, and then flip them face up. Take uh, these squares here, these are going to represent the different planets in the system, shuffle them up and place them somewhere next to this area. Last thing for this little area is take the queen bee, your little miniature, and place it in the queen bee's space. On the right hand side in the top here, you're going to have the three different tiles, green, blue, and red, Go ahead and shuffle them up and place out three in the spaces adjacent to um, and on the left of the main space where you'll be placing your tiles here. You can set a number aside and bring them in when needed or make two stacks of each one of them if you would like since there are a lot of tiles. Go ahead and go to the bottom middle of here and you'll see there's a carve space. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and place a number of car, uh, carve tiles in the six different locations here, mix them up and place them. You won't use the rest of them. Then you're going to go over to the convert area. There's a number of dances. They're basically those long rectangular tiles. Place two of them face up randomly in the spaces. And then of course, take these egg shaped tiles and you can place them face up or face down in the egg space location presented on the board. It doesn't really matter how they're set up because you'll be able to go through them freely when you use the action. Uh, then we're going to have the research cards. You'll take the research cards, you'll shuffle them up, and you'll place them on the space. Last but not least, and maybe even most importantly, you're going to need to know about Queen's Favor and the score track. If you're playing as the first, second, or third player, there is a space represented where you'll place your cube, and each player will place their cube based on their starting order. And then, of course, the Queen's Favor, everyone will start at zero and then that will be it. Okay, that's basically the setup of the game Apiary. Let's talk about how to play. The game Apiary is a pretty standard worker placement type game, and the game takes place in turns. I take a turn, you take a turn. We go back and forth up until a condition is met, in which case we all get one more turn, including the player who triggered the ending, and then we score points. On your turn, you can take one action. An action can be represented by taking one of your workers from your uh, active pool and placing it somewhere on the board, 
or returning any of your characters from your landing area or the main game board back to your active pool. So place a worker or retrieve workers. Let's talk about placing workers and I'll give you the brief summary of what each of the actions do, but there's a lot more involved. So if you want to, you can take a look down below in the description that will explain a complete walkthrough of the game by a really great channel that's very good at explaining setup. So the first thing we have is the explore action. There are two spaces on some of the different areas, but remember whenever you place one of your workers down, you're always going to be placing it in the area where the aerial is coming from, not where it's going to. You can place your worker on the area and take the action. To explore, you'll place your worker down. You'll check to see if it's a number four, if your worker is a four powered worker, and you'll perform that bonus action. If it's not, you will be able to do whatever it says. This one here lets you move the queen ship to uh, X plus X spaces. Then you'll explore the planet. Now, basically that means that whatever powers are presented by ships in these two locations, you will add them up and then move your B. In this case, the game it's going to be probably one, maybe two, and you'll move it uh, up, down, left, or right. Once you get to the last space you arrive at, you'll take the little marker, you'll gain the benefit, each of these has a symbol that you can check the appendix as to what they do, but they range from giving you resources to cards to queen's favor and uh, even victory points as well. You place this on your docking mat and then you'll flip over a tile from this stack here and place it down. From there, you'll explore the location and to explore, you'll get to choose one basic resource. There are three basic resources in the game. You are going to have the water, pollen, and fiber, and you'll place one down on the planet of your choice, and then you will take one of that planet's uh, resources, or if there are more, take more of them, and place it somewhere on your game map. Your game map has a bunch of little circle areas where you can place resources down. Go ahead and set them there, or you can wait till the end of your turn to decide where you want to place them all. After you have taken that specific unique benefit of gaining a resource, and of course your little uh, yellow circle, they're basically going to be done. The next area is the advanced area. This is going to allow you to gain tiles. You can place one of your workers here. If I place a two worker here, I'll check both of the locations. There's a two here and a one that's already printed on the board, giving me a power of three, allowing me to get any of the tiles in the columns that have a two plus or a three plus. Sadly, I do not have five, so the five plus I cannot get currently. Um, when you want a tile, you're simply going to pay the bottom portion of the tile's cost, and then you can go ahead and take it and place it on your main game mat. Uh, these tiles could give you instant benefits when they are placed. They could give you unique powers that will upgrade powers already present on the board, and they're going to give you the ability to gain bonuses when you return your workers back to your docking mat. Each of them are also going to have a number of victory points that you can gain from them um, at the end of the game. After you've gained one of these, go ahead and refill the board back, and then you're done. The grow action is a way in which you can spend your resources to gain new ships from basically out of play. They're basically the ones that are hibernating. After your ships hibernate, you can bring them back, which we'll talk about how that works in a second. And then of course, you can spend two wild resources of your choice that are of the basic variety to get these mats here to increase your player mat, allowing you to place down more of these tiles. Over here in the carve section, you can only access this if your ship is a power of four, and this will allow you to spend honey to take carvings. Carvings in, um, from the honey is the same as these other tiles here in how they are used, but most of them are very powerful and provide some type of end game scoring. Over here on the convert action is going to be allowing you to perform a number of converts based on the power of your ship. If I placed a two here, I would be able to take up to two of any of these converts. I could trade a card for another card, a resource that is basic for any other basic resource, a pollen and a fiber for a wax, or two pollen and a water for a honey. Additionally, there is um, the research section, the last action on the game board, where you will draw X cards based on your ship's power, then you will keep one and discard the rest. These cards you can use on your turn, as many as you'd like, before or after you've taken your actions. They have a variety of uses and a secondary use, which I will talk about after we go through the bonuses. Placing a four on the explore action will typically allow you to utilize a location that has a four benefit on it. Just do whatever it says after you've landed there with your queen. Over here on the advance, you'll just simply gain an extra three victory points. 
The convert action will actually let you make a dance. There's a third player marker, a little, a little square that you might not have used yet or known what it does. You'll take that and you can place it on one of the empty spaces that has a little Queen's Favor marker and it'll let you build with these egg-shaped tiles. You can place any two you want on the tile and then you will be able to utilize that as a convert action. And if anybody uses that convert action when they come to the convert area, the great thing is you're gonna score a free queen's favor on the board whenever they do so. Uh, carve, like I said, is only a four, so it doesn't really matter. You can't use one through three here anyway. And then the grow will allow you to upgrade your faction tile. If you probably haven't noticed it, or maybe you have, your faction tile has two sides. Well, one side is gonna say upgraded. You'll be able to flip this over for free if you place a four on the grow action. Usually that will give you an increase of victory points. And then resource, research, and instead of just drawing cards, so for instance, I put a four there, I draw four and pick one. Now I also get to plant one. So there are cards here, and on the top portion of the card is what you can use it for as basically like an action card. I'm gonna do this to, to gain whatever benefit it is. However, the bottom of the card is going to give you a unique benefit. It's kind of like an, uh, an upgraded victory point condition at the end of the game. You'll be able to slot these down on your player board in the two sections provided. You can only do two of them. However, whenever you gain these tiles here uh, and place them on your board anywhere you'd like, uh, you are going to be able to upgrade another slot. So with each frame you add to your game board, that will give you another one of these uh, one of these plants available to you, up to four total in the entire game. Those are all the bonus actions and main actions of the game. Now we come to the returning. So whenever you want, as long as you have at least one worker out on the board or in your landing area, you can return your workers. So if I have these two workers here, I can just return them back to my game board. Whenever you return a worker that isn't a four, you are going to increase their value by one. So my one will go to a two and my two would go to a three. I'd bring them back to the game board. I would check to see on my player map, do I have any of these recyclable effects? And these are gonna be on the green cards. I'll gain a benefit, one for each worker I bring back and each one can only be activated once. And then I will have my workers at their next highest power and ready to go. Thusly, the larger the power, the more power my actions are that I place on the game board. Um, additionally, if um, I return a worker now and that worker happens to be on the four, instead of actually going back to my game mat, it basically gets kind of retired. It'll go and it'll hibernate off of the game board. I'll take one of my hibernation markers and I'll place it on the hibernation, hibernation comb here. In a three player game, you would add this one here, but if you're just playing two players, you'll use these two sections. Place it on a space, gain the benefit. Usually it's gonna involve some type of resources or the ability to recycle the three different tile types on the game board. Each of these areas is also gonna, gonna be an area control effect of some sort where you'll need to have a certain number of them, three out of five or two out of three to gain the unique benefits at the end of the game. And this is also the game end track. So after a number of bees have hibernated in a two player game, it would be five, six, seven, eight. That would trigger the end, in which case we only get one turn each, including the person who last triggered the game. So when your bees hibernate, they're gone. And the only way to get them back is to grow them or if you happen to get a card that will allow you to place a new worker bee out uh, over here. The last thing I wanna talk about is bumping. If for instance, I have a player who is placed on the game board here and I want to place on that space, I can do that. But I'll have to bump them down. When you bump them down, now you'll have access to their power. So like I said, instead of, so she was a two and then there's a board plus one, so that's three. If I bump her down and now I've got my three plus her two, which is five, allowing me to get a bigger and more powerful tile. If though, however, she wants to go back to the space, she can do that. She can push here, push my guy down, and then her worker will come off and she'll have two options. Option one, she can go ahead and place this guy on the landing zone. It can't be accessed. It's kind of like uh, in limbo until she returns her workers. Just consider it on another space on the game board. That's basically how it functions. Um, and the other option is she can increase its power by one and place it back in its active pool. Why would she wanna do that? Well, because whenever you take your workers back from the game board and your landing area, if you have access to these green tiles here, you can use one for each of the workers that you bring back. So if you are gonna bring back three workers, one in the landing area and two on the main game board, and you have three of those recycle effects, you can use all of them as opposed to maybe only two. 
but using it, and by, but bringing it back to my active pool will allow me to continue to utilize it, thus leaving more, me more ability to make actions as opposed to returning. So it really depends on the game and what your game strategy is. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game Apiary. Continue playing the game and gathering resources. And uh, another little note too is at the end of your turn, I remember how I talked about placing resources on these spaces on your game board as well as on the tiles that you get. If you have extras and you can't fit them, or maybe uh, as long as you're able to fit a resource you have to place it on, but if you have extras by making terrible combinations, you can remove them and gain Queen's favor for that. Um, you're gonna score at the end of the game. Uh, basically, you'll score points for whatever your total track is now. You'll score points for your highest on the Queen's favor. You'll score points for every uh, victory condition on your game mat, as well as all the different filled in aspects to your game. Um, and additionally, you'll score points for your seed cards that you have planted inside your board uh, with their own unique effects. Whoever has the most points is the winner. It's pretty much that simple. Apiary. Let's talk about what I think about it. So like I said, Apiary, first and foremost, is a worker placement game. You'll have one of two actions, place workers down or return your workers. Uh, it reminds me of like Euphoria, another Stonemaier game, and not only the terms of the quality of the game, but also in gameplay. But there are definitely differences. In this game, you are placing out workers that have power, and that power will allow you to utilize effects of the different areas on the game board. Um, when you're playing with more players, obviously it opens up more area, but it's also still condensed based on the number of those players. And you're also able to benefit off of other players' actions. You utilize other opponents' power from their workers and increase your own to gain better benefits. The choosing which game plan you want is wonderful in this game as well. There are many different options. You can go the carve route, where you're trying to gather as many carvings to score as many endgame victory points as possible. Maybe you want to research so that you can plant as many times as possible and then focus on those planting goals. Focusing on your main game board and upgrading it as well is not bad because your basic condition can turn into a double condition or a double powered condition, giving you even more points. Don't forget to make sure you do one dance. Make a dance, because players who make dances that make them really well will maybe trigger other players to utilize those and push on this queen track. The queen track might not seem very good to start with, but at the end of the game, if you push far enough, you can score up to 25 points. And of course, don't neglect your resources and the different tiles in the game, building out your wonderful little beehive, allowing you to do different things. Take those instant actions, make your actions on the board stronger, and of course, the ability to, when you return workers, gain a benefit, as well as additional space for your resources and victory points at the end of the game are not something to be neglected either. The art in Apiary is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's like, like space bees. It's kind of a twist on a worker placement since these are actually worker bees that you're placing out um, to gather valuable resources to improve your colony. Um, and each of the different factions plays differently. The first starting ones are fairly simple. They have a unique adjacency benefit, but they have the same type of resources. But you have a variety, and I mean quite a variety of different um, upgraded kind of style colony factions that you can utilize once you've gotten through the gist of the game. This is a medium light Euro. It's not super, super heavy, but there are a lot of choices, which makes this a wonderful little title. The fact that I can teach this quite simply and uh, something that people can easily get into and understand is nice, but it also feels like it, its own complex feel of the game. There's unique twists and turns to it. And the most unique factors, which I wanna talk about now, are the power in which you hibernate and utilize. So these workers, upgrading them is powerful and even pushing them to four. Four is like a super ability they get before they have to go to sleep. And in order to awaken them, you're going to need to go to the grow faction, uh, the grow section of the game board, which will let you not only grow your main board here, um, but you're also going to be able to basically grow your, your, your colony. And you can use a number of strength to do that to increase your workers. Um, it, it's kind of like a good thing and a bad thing as you get your workers stronger because you'll have to eventually kind of prepare to grow out your faction again. And if you don't, you might limit yourself at the end of the game. The game also ends a little quicker than I had expected, actually. Like, it came down to, I'm like, oh, I got all this time, and it's like, oh, wait, no, it's down to the wire. And games like this, this is the perfect style of, uh, it's a perfect type of style for me, in which you're like, never feel like you get to do quite exactly what you want to do. So you're always gonna wanna try different unique combinations and factors based on what everything, you know, is going, where everything is going and where everything is being placed. And so I might not be able to get 
all the tiles I want because I focus too much on carvings, gathering the resources, and maybe even researching to place down a lot of plants. Um, but because you don't do that, you're going to be able to play this multiple times. This is a lot of replayability with a lot of just nuances that you can take in, but also very, very simple. Just like Euphoria, it has that kind of feel where the game ends quickly and you have to kind of make these really tight decisions and um, it just has a lot of that little feel to it. Now, now, personally, I like this game better than that game, actually. Now, this game has that theme that I love. I love moving the worker bees and upgrading their power. I love the queen bee and her flying around on the field, presenting unique little challenges um, for how to get exactly the type of resources that I want. And the fact that I'm kind of creating the galaxy and what planets have what resources. And the ability to make the dances, while it's kind of a little thing, it actually is really free and cool and can pay off if you make the right dances and make dances specifically just for you. I love the fact that they have a ton of additional tiles in the game that you're never going to get through in the first game so there's a bunch of different combinations that you'll have as well as a ton of different upgrades like instead of just drawing three cards and choosing one I have an upgrade that lets me draw three and choose two instead and uh, bonkers and the cards oh the cards the cards are good usually in worker placement games uh, action cards suck. Like, they're like, oh, I got three. This one kind of gives me a resource here. This one lets me have a unique specific uh, thing I can do. These guys are powerful. Play this card to swap one of your planted cards with a card from your hand. Maybe you couldn't achieve an ability of a planted card. Now you can swap it out with another planted card that you've actually already achieved at the end of the game. Bonkers. Or perhaps I can refresh, refresh the display of all these green tiles on the board. Then I can purchase one of them for minus one of the resources. So it's it's a cheaper action. It's actually an action with workers I could have utilized. Now I don't have to and I can save that with these cards here. The worker you place this turn gets plus two strength. And strength five is A-OK. -okay. So now I can use my three as a four and my four as a four. And I get two bonus abilities, two ultimate bonus abilities. The cards are wonderful. And drawing them, I was like, oh, hell yeah. I love all these cards. I love all this stuff. Man, it was good. So anyway, quality is excellent. Artwork, stylization, theme, all of it put together is great. Uh, there are a few things with remembering how when, you, when you're pulling workers back there's like okay this is a four it has to go over here and these guys have to go over here and okay each one i have to activate is here and here and the hibernation one i have to place in the hibernation comb so there's a little bit of maintenance that kind of sucks about pulling the workers back but it's nothing too complicated there's only two things you have to do but i don't know my, my brain's like uh just send them out do an organize them first hibernation place all your hibernation gain all the benefits there and then return flip up the power and of course, go ahead and gain any refresh abilities that you might have. Um, and the last thing, the bee doesn't stick onto the thing. It just kind of, it just kind of comes off. I wish, I wish it stayed on, but I, I guess I, I would just maybe not stayed on like permanently, but it's just a little like thicker so that the bee kind of doesn't just fall off like that. Not a huge deal. I'm gonna take some some safety glue or some super glue and just deal with that after I paint my little bee. But yeah. Overall, Apiary is a solid worker placement game. I'm keeping this, just like all the rest of my Stonemeyer games, and it's gonna stay in my collection, and we're gonna play it on game night. Next game night, in fact, because I know a few friends are gonna love this. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Apiary. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. Also, we did a, a, a full walkthrough of the game, so if you wanna watch somebody play the game through and through, you can watch us. Um, explain the game and play the game all at once. Um, you can also check out, uh, there's um, Before You Play that did a pretty good walkthrough slash playthrough of the game. And of course the um, Watch It Played as well. They both did some really great stuff. So you can check out those stuff. I'll have links for those guys as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. There's a live stream on Sunday. And of course we have one on Wednesday on whatnot, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games, sell games, talk about games, all kinds of things about games. And uh, we appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to building a beehive colony and becoming your queen emperor next time.